Okay, so we're back and we're gonna get ready to wire this up. The way we're gonna wire this up, you know, we're not gonna wire up the motors just yet because we don't have the board in place. But what we're actually gonna wire up is the power switch to the battery pack. Now the way we're gonna do that is that we're gonna take the red wire coming from the battery pack, which we've already pre-stripped here, and we're just gonna connect it to the middle wire on the switch, the one that's in the middle that we've already put there. Now in order to do that, we're gonna basically just uh, we're going to strip the wires oops accidentally cut that too deep there so let's strip these wires here now you can go ahead and solder it however you like what we're going to do is we're just going to twist them together for now and we're going to tape it just to make things easier for us uh, we've done enough soldering already And basically you just twist them together, get some basic uh, electrical tape. Now with electrical tape, the way it works really well is that you have to get the tape to just stick to itself and then just kind of wrap it around a few times and that's really when it sticks well and it's really just to, it doesn't have to look aesthetically pleasing or be perfect just wrap it up and give it a good twist and that's it very simple as you can see nothing fancy now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tuck these away I'm going to kind of do a little cable management here while I tuck it away. Good thing about this is that you're not putting anything inside this kit, nor do you want to put anything inside the body, simply because there's not enough room. Now the next part you'll notice is that your new wires for power become the black wire from the power and the red wire from the switch, which is the top connector on the switch itself. So I'm going to go ahead as well and I'm going to strip that cable give it a good couple twists and we're good we have our power that's gonna be great now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take the wires that go to the motors they should all be equal distance and I'm gonna actually what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna give a twist tie a little knot on the back motors so I know where they're going where they're coming from you can alternately put a little I don't think you know what actually now that I think about it probably better if I put a little piece of tape on it just it's just gonna act as a label for the back motors when I go to wire them later so I'm gonna go ahead and put that one there And put this one on the back here. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the battery pack, the batteries to the battery pack. So I always have my uh, handy battery uh, here, ready to go. And I'm just going to put them in here. The nice thing about this is nothing is wired up yet, so I'm just putting the batteries in place. I don't have any worries now. Alternatively, you might want to get a battery pack like one of these from Radio Shack. The only problem here is that this is a tight fit when you go to put it in there. And not only that, but you're going to have to get a Tamiya connector for it. Maybe switch the wiring harness. You can pick up one of these wiring harnesses anywhere and just use that instead, and that could be used. So we're having to go with the wiring harness that came with the kit. But that's a customization of the kit, so I'm not going to deviate too much from it. I'm just putting in some basic energizer batteries that I picked up. Let's make sure I have, looks like I ran out of energizers, so I'm just going to grab another, oh, oh, there we go, Got another energizer battery right there. There we have it. So we've got our battery connected. Sure enough, everything's good. 
Now these connectors that go to these motors are really delicate so make sure you're careful with this. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to go ahead and put this on. Now it looks, I'm trying to see which way things are supposed to go on this. Can't really tell, but what I'm going to do is here, it looks like this is the front. The reason why I know is that it has these two things here, um, basically these two additional holes, which it looks like this will be mounted on towards. So uh, what we're going to do is, I'm going to feed these wires in through the front and feed the back ones through the back. Actually, knowing that now, it looks like I'm going to have to change my schema around a little bit. I'm going to take off one of these indicators here. I'm going to get another indicator and just kind of do it for the left and right side. The reason why you want to do this is because once you have this lid on, it's going to be hard to figure out what goes where. So what I did is I backtracked and I put I put uh, electrical tape on the left side of the vehicle, on the wires for the left side of the vehicle, the motors on the left side, and left the right side with nothing. And I'm also going to run the battery through the back portion here. And there we have it. The wires are just kind of sticking out there. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and just screw this in. Assuming it's going to take four screws, so I'm going to take four of the most common screws that we have there and just start screwing these in. I left them loose, that's why I didn't screw it in diagonally. the experience of the last one how easily it went in. I realize I didn't have to do this diagonal screwing but it does help with most kits and I would still recommend it. Alright so here you have it. The kit is getting constructed and we're moving really fast uh, with this kit. It's really nice easy to build. The only thing I recommend is kind of watch out with these tires. They, they slip right off the, uh, the, the actual rims, but uh, there you go. Remember this is off, that's on. The only part that we left out was the adapter here. Now, one thing to make note of with this kit is that the battery is not easily accessible. So when you start mounting stuff here, you wanna make sure it's not too permanent because, or easy to take on and off simply because uh, you're gonna have to, you know, you have to wire a bunch of things on there. Now, you have a couple options. You can go ahead and just scratch the sensor plate and put this on there, or you can go ahead and put the sensor plate on and let you uh, you know, do your thing. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna mount this plate on and then we're gonna put the, the uh, DF Robot Romeo Arduino board on top. Now, which side is the front, you might ask? You know, First of all, both sides are identical on either side. Now, which is it, this way or this way? So, as you can see, there's this hole here. This hole here is actually for servos. You could typically mount a uh, servo into this spot here if you wanted to. So, for example, we have this servo ready to go for a uh, pan tilt mechanism. And this could be mounted right in there. As you can see, here's the pan tilt. So you could easily put your pan tilt here, and you're ready to go. Having said that, you want to take note of that because where are we going to mount the the actual Arduino board? You know, how do we want to mount it? You know, I think that it'd be nice if we mounted it in a way where we could do it. Now, I'm going to take this off, and I'm just before I start mounting this, I'm going to take a look at how this is going to be placed on here, if it can be placed at all, because what I'm seeing here is that there's no holes for this and it looks like we're going to have to mount it. Sure enough, 